Hello everybody, let's talk about mortgages in April 2023. The deals that we are doing, the deals that we're not doing. Why are we not doing them? Lending criteria, product pricing, some of the dangers that I see in the market right now. Some of the reasons why people are getting declined. Uh, I think that's quite a big one. Um, we'll talk about some of the deposit issues that I'm seeing, some of the common uh, themes that I'm seeing, people getting new jobs, moving jobs, criteria affordability so we're going to touch on all of those things so if you are someone who's looking to get a mortgage in the next year i would say this is the right video to watch as always like and subscribe to the channel the channel's got over 190 videos now on it with all different types of subjects to do with uk mortgages so i would love for you guys to like subscribe hit the bell icon and obviously make comments on what you are seeing and hearing from me take care and i'll see you on the video So we've seen a lot of activity, the actual activity has come back and I, although we had some, uh, a lot of uh, doom and gloom around uh, property prices and mortgages and rates going up, uh, things have seemed to have stabilised and certainly in the last two months we've seen a noticeable return for first time buyers and next time buyers. The residential market in my opinion it's still buoyant, it's pretty good. Um, uh, from my perspective, we've still got people that have been searching for properties. The good news is there are actually finding properties and they're finding them at the right price now. So there's been a lot of down, down valuations. People that are selling have come, come in with expectations. So deals are being done from that perspective. So uh, you've got two schools of thoughts there from people. You've got some people that are sitting on the sidelines still waiting for this crash, waiting for property prices to drop further. And you've got some people that essentially had to buy, you know, because of family set up, because they had to move, because of their job. So you've got two camps there and um, only time will tell where they end up. But, you know, there is certainly activity happening still, right? Um, what we're seeing uh, from a product perspective on the residential front is um, the two-year fix is priced generally more expensive than a five-year fix. And some lenders are actually well off the pace on their two-year products. So they essentially don't want that business. Okay, so it's interesting when you're looking at, I mean, I was looking at um, Barclays probably today. I looked at their rate and they're well off the pace on the two-year fixed. So uh, especially at high loan to value. So you've got lenders now making conscious decisions of staying clear of certain types of business, whether it's 90% loan to value business they don't want, whether it's the two year short term they don't want, whether it's the tracker deals they don't want. So there's certainly a lot of that going on. So just because you've got an agreement in principle or you've approached the lender or your broker's approached the lender, it's always worth revisiting those things before you go to application, certainly, and even after the application is having a look and seeing what's out there. Affordability models have changed a little bit. You've got the ONS data coming in, which basically the ONS, the official Office of National Statistics data, which filters through uh, with the cost of living, for example, utility bills and so forth. So a lot of the lenders, no matter what you say you, your util utility bills are, they use this model, they use the, um, the calculations on the back end. So um, we've seen some changes around that. We've seen some lenders, though, loosen up their affordability. At the end of the day, guys, what's happened is lenders need business. They employ people. They need to make money. For them to make money, they need to lend money, right? However, they're restricted sometimes by their pricing model. So they still need to make money from the prices. So they can't give away the mortgage, bearing in mind where the Bank of England base rate is. They can't really do too much with the affordability side of things. So what's happened is they're sitting around their products people and they're going, OK, what can we do to attract that business? Not just on rate. So what's happened, there's been a lot of tweaking of criteria. So I wouldn't say major criteria changes, but there has been tweaking of criteria, whether that's the amount of bonus they will take into account, for example, whether it's around second job criteria, whether it's around uh, loan to values. At, and this is the big one, 75% uh, loan to value. If you are earning a certain amount, whether it's 60K, 70K, 100K, then we've seen a, a number of lenders will go, well, we'll go up to five and a half times income. OK, or whether it's professionals, there are lenders that will say, look, you know, if you're a teacher, a pharmacist, doctor, a dentist, we will lend you more. OK, so there's a lot of that going on because 
they're almost trying to be covert about what they need to do to tweak lending because they need to be seen to be responsible lending. They can't come and say, look, we'll lend everybody 10 times their income. But what they are doing is tweaking things and seeing how this affects it. So whether it's how they treat background properties, for example, or background income, for example, so or how they treat your expenses, the, the amount of loading or they, they will do on an affordability if you've got debt, if you've got student loan, if you've got credit cards, if you've got personal loans, car loans, if you've got pension contributions. So all of those things, a good broker will run through and will know we've got various systems that will check affordability. There are various systems that check uh, criteria. Obviously, your knowledge yourself, you will know certain lenders are best suited for certain clients. But there's a lot of tweaking going on. So just don't go by pricing because pricing is one element of it you know lenders fees so certainly on the buy to let side of things it's absolute madness on the buy to let side i think i'll do a separate video on buy to let because on the residential at the moment uh, is a lot more straightforward um uh, you've got lending fees so just don't be fooled by uh, a rate that's low but it may have a high fee on there also there are cashback products and generally with cashback i get this question quite a lot when do i get my money if the product's got a 250 pound cashback when do i get it generally you get the cashback on completion or within 30 days of completion is put into your account so um, that should answer it because there's a lot of cashback deals going on the reason there's cashback deals going on is because the the solicitors the conveyances service levels are pretty pretty poor they've actually improved a little bit as volumes have come down but what some people tend to do is say look i want to use my own solicitor give me some money towards the solicitor and i will use my own solicitor rather than go for for a free legals and that's generally on remortgages another big uh, change within the industry and i think there's more more to come on this is around product transfers what a product transfer is is when essentially let's go with your high street lender you've got a deal you've got a two-year fix and your two years coming up now that particular lender will will or they could offer you a new product so that's what's called the product transfers you, you could decide to just stay with the same lender and switch to a product and generally there are rules around that whether they run a credit check whether they don't do affordability checks all of those sort of things come into play now some lenders didn't have that facility because they were funded in a certain way where they used to get your mortgage and they used to sell the mortgage on so they were just becoming they were lenders but they were getting the funds from a big bank and they were just selling it to you and then servicing it for a few years and selling the debt on so that became complicated because they had to now or or a lot of lenders are actually offering product transfers and they couldn't do that so there's still some lenders that don't offer product transfers but mainly majority of the high street banks they they're offering that facility so you're not stuck and you're not stuck into a you know you're not trapped into a deal where you're going on a standard verbal rate after your two percent fixed rate runs out and that brings me to the point we are seeing more and more people that are coming off their low mortgage rates um i remember i was kicking myself uh, for a couple of years um because i did a mortgage on i was on a fix for 1.59 now I did a fix at 1.59 a couple of years ago, I think about three years ago, and that was a good deal then. But then about two years ago, we were doing the same deals for 1%. Okay, now, so I sort of kicked myself saying, look, I do mortgages, why did I fix them for five years? But I wanted the security and I thought it was a good deal. It still represented a good deal. Um, come back now, how I would love to have that 1.59 deal continue for, for a duration of the term of the mortgage. Um, so my mortgage is coming up in a couple of years time i'll have to i'll have to think about that but right now uh, you know you're seeing people that are coming off one percent and it's very you know apparent you know you'll get a four percent deal even if you've got i don't know 60 percent loan to value you know you're looking around about the four percent mark so there's a bit of a shock to the system but don't worry it doesn't you know get your broker to work out the affordability because it may not be as much, you know, on, on a bottom line. I think, you know, the utility bills is a lot more expensive, to be fair. So depending on your loan size and loan amount. But, you know, generally six months before your mortgage comes up to renewal, you need to get in touch with your lender and get in touch with an independent mortgage broker because they can assess not only what the lender's offering you, but what else is on the market, depending on your circumstances. Because a lot of people, their circumstances have changed. They might have a couple of kids. They may have 
uh, you know, the wife might have been off work or has gone back to work or the husband's gone back to work or they've gone part time or one of them's got self-employed or they're looking to borrow some more money for a home extension, for example. So all of those things have to be uh, thought about. Um, in terms of some of the deals that I'm not doing or, or I've seen, um, let's talk about that. What am I seeing that I'm not doing? Um, I'm seeing a lot of people stuck on bridging finance. So the and I've done videos on these guys. Go and check my YouTube channel out. There's a lot of people that are on bridging finance that should not be on bridging finance. They should not be in that place in the first place. And, and that's because essentially they were overstretching. I mean, I had a conversation with a lady uh, two days ago. Um, she basically said I didn't know what I was talking about because she's already been offered a, a, a product. I said it's not necessarily about me not offering her the product. The products are there to offer. I didn't think she should get the product. Now she was on about fifteen and a half thousand pounds salary. She wanted to get. She did have a large deposit, so she was wanted to get a bridging finance for investment property. Now the problem was is she was a first time buyer, first time landlord, no real experience. She's on a low income compared to the debt that she will take on. She's got no other buy to let in the background, no other professional sort of experience that's there. She wanted to buy a property, do it up and flip it on bridging finance. Now, technically that fits a lender's criteria. And there may be a lender out there, so the buy to let, a non-regulated deal, right? However, is it is it best advice to give that person with no experience a a solution and um, i didn't think she was ready for it by the discussion i had with her the questions that i asked for her i i, I wanted to understand what her exit strategy was was it refine i think she wanted to refinance actually not to sell it so um so okay if you're going to refinance that property you know what what's your credit profile what's your situation and she just felt that i asked too many questions around that and I lost that deal well good good riddance you know because I think that's that's a problematic deal and I get calls regularly from people getting those type of deals also a lot of deals around uh, deposits um, where people are getting gifts whether it's from a foreign country what are the rules around that and there's more and more and more issues around uh, gifted deposits from foreign countries um, and I think there's a, there needs to be some more work done from a lender's perspective to give clear guidance around this because it's a little bit wishy-washy around it. So a lot of new jobs. Now, people that have got new jobs, and again, you've got to be cautious. It depends, okay? You've got a job with, say you've got a new job, there's a big jump in your salary. So you were on 20,000 pounds, now you're on 40,000 pounds. The company is small, okay? The lenders would want to know who your employer is, They'll probably look, check them out on Companies House. If you're on £40,000, did they make £40,000 profit last year? Does it warrant your salary? How many employees have they got? All of these things are on Companies House, so they can double check these things, okay? So um, people need to be more cautious about if you are looking to go into a new job, look, you know, ask yourself some of these questions. Is it a corporate? Is it a reputable company? Do they have lots of employers? Because that's what lenders want to know. You know, it's a big difference between working for IBM, even if you're a cleaner at IBM, than working for someone who's got three employees, okay, and has been running for a year and a half. Big difference between the two, okay? It's not necessarily your income or your position. It's to do with the organization. If it's a new job, okay, so... Uh, that's important. Think about that before you start going and doing applications. Because when you start doing applications and speaking to brokers that are too zealous, they just want to get the business, they're all the takers, or you do it directly yourself, you get yourself in a load of crap because you've gone and applied for a lender and this lender will go, well, we don't believe the income or we don't like this case. And they may share that data with other people, with other lenders, and that will make your job much more difficult. I've also taken a decision that I'm not taking on any cases where there's a live broker on the scene. Unfortunately, or fortunately in a way, um, I'm in a position whereby, obviously because of the YouTube and a lot of the exposure on our website, I get a lot of clients. The problem is those clients have often have got cases going on with other brokers or di lenders directly. I've made the decision that I don't want that business, okay? Because God knows what that other broker's done. There's a reason why they're searching for somebody else. And it's normally they're not happy with the broker. There's, there's some sort of a problem with the case. They've been rejected and so forth. 
Now, I don't mind taking that case on if the process is finished. Okay, if they've dealt with a broker, they can't help it for whatever reason. But I'm not going to run another application process in tandem with somebody else. It's not one for me and it's not a way we want to work. Okay, simply because we don't know what's been said and these information share gets shared around. You know, if, if a date of birth is wrong, that's fair enough. That could be a typo. But in terms of income, um, second jobs, expenses, credit commitments, all of those things, you know, um, I can only trust myself and my own team rather than trusting what other brokers have put in or the client, frankly, have inputted to a lender. And that's why we don't like to run them side by side. So I'm getting a lot of declines, okay, where the, where the clients have gone to a broker, broker's gone completely missing, not picking up the phone calls or whatever, or it's the lender sort of declining them and not giving them any reason. Um, you know, and, and what I will say is it's more worrying when you get declined and you're not being given the reasons, okay? Because that means the lender's not happy about something. Now, if you are declined on a standard thing, it could be the property, they'll tell you if the property's there. It could be your credit profile, they'll tell you about your credit profile. If they're not telling you, then that means they're not happy with something. So, again, a lot of that stuff's coming through. A lot of credit issues, minor credit issues, payday loans or... Um, you know, missed payments, late payments. Now, just because you've had late payments and missed payments, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not a high street client still. Like I said, lenders are behind the scenes, have are tweaking their tolerance levels, okay? So, there's a difference between someone who's had late payments with 10% deposit and someone who's had late payments with 25% deposit. And there is a difference. You can go to the same lender and be accepted for one and decline for the other, right? So, don't just discount that and be you know unfortunately i've seen some cases where they're going to very specialist lenders with high rates where in theory if the broker was or, or the client or the broker whatever it is if they could have that dialogue it may be accepted with the high street okay so it's always easier to go down the least resistant route because it means as a broker you've got to try the high street if it gets declined you've got to then take it to a specialist where you know, I think it's always worth trying to go down the high street because it's best advice to the client. Um, so a lot of borderline cases like that where there's been adverse credit, there's been some, some minor issue, or one of them has got an issue, the other one doesn't have an issue, a lot of that. Uh, you get often get inquiry forms come in. Husband, uh, sorry, client's married, everything about the husband, but the wife's off the application form. Telltale sign, okay, why is the wife on the application form? Oh, she's got some credit issues. You go, well, actually, if she's got some credit issues, it's more than likely the lender will trace it back if you've got financial commitments together. So it's no point leaving the wife off. Let's see what the credit issues are. Let's try to see if there's a lender out there that will accept that situation. So a lot of things are around that. Um, a lot, Like I said, it's certainly the market has turned from a residential perspective, definitely. I'm seeing more and more transactions going on, um, more and more... Um, in particular around affordability a lot of lenders are tweaking things with their affordability um, incomes uh, income multiples uh, have been affected so yeah um, give me a call really if you've got anything uh, you want to discuss leave a comments here if you want to if you want, if you want me to talk about a, any topic this is just really a roundup uh, I'd love to hear about your experiences with getting mortgages and um, your questions if you have got any questions if you want me to put any videos together on this particular topic put your suggestions below and I'll catch you on the next one take care all the best the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.